Good morning, everyone. Uh, this morning, uh, it has just been such a wonderful blessing so far. Uh, sorry about that. Let's just get my camera uh, positioned. Um, it has been a wonderful blessing so far. Um, it's always a blessing to hear um, you share what your personal, almost like a testimony twist to that which God is about to speak to us about during the course of the day. And it's, and it's an amazing thing to know that uh, the Holy Spirit gives a word and then everyone can chime in and really um, put a position on that word as to how it relates to you and how you understand that word. I just wanna bring greetings to you all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Uh, for those who are joining us for the first time, I want to say welcome. You have just landed on the page where the power of the Holy Spirit lives, <laughs> uh, where here you come among a people who literally believe in walking out their faith. Um, we don't speak of faith only from a hypothetical standpoint. We live the word of God. We, we seek to understand it and we seek to walk it out. Anything that Jesus Christ does, anything that he did in his lifestyle while he walked on earth, anything that he taught, anything that he professed, anything that he declared is what we practice in Pure Love Ministries. And for all those who are out there, all those who are just who are joining via whether Facebook, whether whatever social media platform you're on, I'm going to ask you at this point to share. We are about to talk about a very important topic, and this is about wait for the power. <laughs> and this is the part of the word and the part of the service where I tell you to turn to your neighbor and say to them, wait for the power because you do not want to go out <laughs> and fight a battle without power because power provides, power comes from one who has authority. <laughs> and, and, you know, one of the worst things that can ever happen to you, whether in the corporate world or whether in the spiritual world, is for someone to give you position without power. <laughs> it's for someone to give you position without power. Power, because power brings authority. Ha! Uh, uh, this this word today is so serious that I want to contain myself. I don't want to run around this room. I don't want to get up and and shout too much because when you talk about the dunamis power of God, it is something that really, really, really gets us all excited. Um, and right now, we just wanna we wanna just really, really make sure that we understand why Christ did this very important practice. Why did he say to the disciples, don't just, I am going and I want you to go. <laughs> yes, he gave them the great commission, but he says, before you act on this commission that I'm giving you, I want you to go and wait. And somebody this morning gave a very valid point and tapped into something. He didn't just send them to wait any and anywhere. He says, go and wait in Jerusalem. <laughs> that is very key to receiving. When God calls us, he gives us specific. He tells us where. <laughs> he tells us when. He says, listen, just wait, because in a few days you will be empowered for this work. And guess what? They acted, and there are some things that they do, some sequence of action that take place. Uh, between the time of God, Jesus Christ, uh, 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 speaking to them and telling them that they will be endowed with power and the time that the power came, there was something that happened between that span of time. And we want to look at it because we want to make sure that we are in a posture. It is very important for our posture to receive <laughs> because there is a posture and there is a position and there is a place Huh. Don't lose those three P's, P's that I just said. There's a posture, there's a position, and there is a place that God wants you to be before he pours out. Huh. So posture, position, place, and then the pouring. <laughs> I 
Uh, I want you to stay with me. Uh, God, we just want to invite the Holy Spirit. Father, we come to you now. We lift you up. We magnify you. I feel your Holy Ghost power. And I thank you, Lord, that you are in the midst of what we are doing because this is your word. This is your promise that we are two or three come together touching anything concerning your name. You are there too. You are there too. Bless, Lord God, you are in the midst. And so, Father, we understand that we can only water, we can only plant, but it is you, Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKadosh, it is you that brings the increase. And so we invoke you in the midst of this conversation. We say, let no flesh glory in your presence, but you, El Elohim, you, Yahweh, you, Adonai, you, El Shaddai, you, El Elyon, you go ahead and be magnified, be made large in this conversation today. You be made big, Lord God. You be magnanimous in this conversation today as we speak of you, Lord. You be glorified. And I pray now, God, that every flesh that Wayne be slain and the spirit of the living God come forth and speak with power and authority and clarity with precision, Lord God. You go forth, cut into joints and marrow, and you, God, do what only you can do by bringing increase and the fire of the Holy Spirit to this word. Give me sharpness, agility of wit as we dissect into your word today and as we bring to your people the ream of word that will take them through this dispensation of, of life that they're living, this stage that they're going through, this dimension that they're supposed to walk over into God. We pray that this word will transition them into that place as we give you full authority now in the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua Amashiach. We call it done in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen where you are. Uh, we are going to touch a few scriptures today, and I'm going to ask you, if, if Evangelist, to go back. Uh, we're going to flip between two places. We're going to flip between Acts 1, and we're going to do some reading there, uh, there about uh, Acts 1 and verse 8. And we are going to go uh, back to the scripture that was read, um, where we're going to talk um, from uh, Luke 24, and we're going to look at verse 44 through to the end of that chapter. And I want to start there because um, there is there's something that is important uh, about when Christ gave the command. Christ gave the command and he gave some specifics. And we don't want to read over the specifics because sometimes we go too fast. I know I like the old time saying that says when you walk too fast, you walk two times. And we don't want to have to do a do-over. We want to walk and make sure that we walk out the commandment. When my, uh, when my son Waden spoke earlier, he spoke about the obedience factor. He spoke about the, 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 the matter of being able to remain subdued, to remain in a position of patience when we are executing God's command. And there is a very important lesson to be learned about how when God speaks, how we respond and how we get this, 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 this contract to be valid and to be executed uh, in the manner where we can receive what was promised because you understand that if there is a if there's a will that is set up for you and in the will it says that you have got to uh, um, complete college before you can receive this sum of money it means that you cannot walk up to the executor of the will and say i want my money you have got to do your part which is to complete the course and you have got to walk out the the instructions which are given because god is a god of covenant I want to say this again. God deals with covenant promises and covenant relationship. What God does is that he speaks the word and he gives us the promises that is wrapped up into certain steps of obedience that we need to execute to receive. A lot of time we want to jump the steps. And a lot of us want to receive the power that Moses has, but we don't want to go up into the mountain and spend time with God. Hallelujah. I feel the power of God here. I want to spend some time and talk to you today about the process that precedes the power. I want you to write that down. There is a process that precedes the power. It is important for us to understand that God has given his instruction 
And sometimes we find ourselves manifesting in, 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 a, in a gift wherein we just operate based on something that is a natural talent, but we don't operate within the power. And there's a difference between someone who is singing with soul and someone who is singing with the anointing of God. <laughs> I'm going somewhere. I want you to stay with me. I am here to unlock the power today because sometimes you don't understand that operating in the gift is not enough. God wants to, to unlock the power behind the gift so that when you move, the spirit of God moves with you. When you speak, the fire of God it permeates the atmosphere. And that is where we are taking this, where we move to a place where we operate under the power of the living God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just go ahead, evangelist, and just read those couple of verses. I want you to go to Luke, and I want you to read my, uh, Luke 24 from verse 44, and we're going to stop at um, 49. So go ahead and take me there. Luke 24 from 44 to 49, and I'll yes. read it from NLT version. Is that fine for the message? That's fine, but you could do it. King James. It doesn't matter. Go ahead. Okay. All right. So I'll be doing the King James version then, and it says, and he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you hmm. while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, hmm. which were written in the law of Moses mm -hmm. and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Hold on a while. I'm going to take it. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to interrupt you for a minute because I, I don't want any of these to be read over. So there was some things that Christ highlighted to them that took place before we get to this place where Christ is now giving them this mandate, <laughs> this ministry mandate. <laughs> because now Christ is saying, you have spent three years in university uh. walking with me. He says, you have been walking with me. You have seen what I have done under the influence of the Holy Spirit. I have not done anything, nothing at all, despite being solicited by the devil to act upon the power that was within me based on his command. I refuse to move without the leading of the Holy Spirit because everything you see me do was mandated by my Father. I made sure that I align myself with the authority and the power before I act, even though I have the power to act. <laughs> I'm going somewhere and I need you to listen to me carefully because I don't want you to miss this. Christ had the power to do things. That is why when the enemy came to him, he quoted the scripture of the psalm and said, God promised that if you throw yourself down from this mountain, you shall not, your foot shall not be dashed against a stone and you have the authority to do this. Why don't you just jump? <laughs> jump and I know the devil is speaking to some people today and say you have the power to jump so why don't you jump you have the authority to curse why don't you curse why don't you do this thing and show your power because you have something within you but he says listen before I operate in the gift I am going to wait until I am being led until the Holy Spirit proceed <laughs> and direct and give the authority because we don't live by by your by anyone who speaks. We live by the specific authority, the specific command that flows from the Father down to the Son. And so Christ declared, and He says that everything that was spoken of Me, first thing that He highlighted, everything that was prophesied of Me, everything that was said of Me by the in in the law that was written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the psalm was, was executed and was manifested and came forth in my time while I walked with you and you were here and you recorded it. So you have seen the first, the promise of God being as, as it was spoken through the prophets of old being, being executed, being manifested, come to pass during my walk with you. That was the first thing. And note that, that Christ said, those things were executed because it is important. Christ is showing you that I don't just come and do things willy-nilly. 
I am following a plan. I am following an order. I am following an authority. I am following an authority. I am not reestablishing a kingdom. I am speaking of a kingdom that already exists, that has already given out a mandate, and I am following the authority that is set. Because I'm not here to do anything new. He says, I do not speak of a new commandment. But I speak of that which was already spoken by Moses. <laughs> because I am here not to change, but to fulfill. And that is where God's spirit. A lot of time we miss the fact that there is nothing new that we are coming to do. But we are coming to execute a command that has already been issued in the atmosphere by El Elohim. He said, by our heavenly father. He says, everything I do, my father has already spoken of it and written it that I should execute these things. I'm telling you today, saints of God, you have nothing new that has been called, that you have been called to do, but that which was written. That which Christ has given, which is a cre which is, which is called the, 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 the great commission, which is the ministry mandate that we have to how we should move and how we should use these gifts and how the power will come to empower us that these gifts can unlock and can do the work in the kingdom of God, not for the glory of man, but for the glory of the living God. That is where God wants to take us with these things. And so the Holy Spirit today, we see that Christ says, stay here and don't you move. Until you are endowed with power. <laughs> Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. So continue reading now. Take me down to verse 45 and tell me what it says there and go ahead to 49. Then opened he their understanding mm -hmm. that they might understand the scripture. Hold on. So, so Christ after Christ spoke. <laughs> yeah. You see how it is funny? There is an unlocking that has to take place. Because understanding oh, what man knows the things of God. What man can discern the heart of God. It has to be the spirit of God. God that reveals the deep things of God to the people of God and today I'm here to tell you God has spoken and you have got to get yourself aligned so that Christ can unlock <laughs> can unlock the, the understanding in your mind that you can receive the deep things of God because you have started you have heard the word but God said I'm about to take you up a little higher I'm about to lift altitude I'm about to go to a place where you are going to need a deeper revelation to stay with me here. So he says, now that you have walked with me three years, never before have we heard that Christ unlocked something in them that they could understand. <laughs> but now when Christ is about to leave, he said, I'm going to unlock you. I'm going to open up your mind of your understanding that you shall understand the deep things of God. And God is speaking to someone today. He says, the experience you're having, the mystery that the thing that is going on in your life is not to kill you. It's an unlocking that's taking place. God says, I have given to you some keys. But before I give you the keys, I need to unlock some things so you can understand what doors to open, what doors to shut, what doors to speak and say, thus says God. So you have got to go and wait for the power. And so God spoke. <laughs> God spoke. And God said to them, because they were still in their carnal selves, not to say in a sin way, but when God speaks, when Jesus speaks, when the Holy Ghost speaks, flesh and blood cannot understand that. You have got to get to a spiritual place to understand divine revelation. And so Christ says, they might be there thinking to themselves ordinarily, ah, why is he telling us to go wait? <laughs> but God says, listen, I'm going to unlock something that you say, you don't have to wonder about what I'm speaking to. And God unlocked it. He opened your understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Because when it comes to the scriptures of God, no man knows the heart of God. When you talk about prophets, when you talk about, when you talk about preachers, when you talk about teachers, man can speak their opinion. But when it comes to the divine revelation of God, it takes the spirit of God to unlock understanding. And that's why some people speak and Paul said they speak with the tongues of men and of angels and they have not that 
thing, that thing that only can come from the spirit of the living God. It says they are just a sound, a noisy gong. You're just making noise, a bag of mouth. <laughs> But Christ says, no, I am going to unlock this thing that you can, when you speak, there will be understanding and clarity <laughs> because the power has been added to the word. And so Christ says, listen, now you open their understanding and say, listen, thus it is written and thus it is necessary for Christ to suffer. Go ahead and read. And he spoke now about what has been written. In verse 46, continue. He speaks about what has been written, what has taken place, and what is to come. Christ liked to talk about past, present, and future. Because the God you serve is Alpha and Omega. He doesn't start in the middle. He doesn't start without un your understanding of the beginning. That is why in Pure Love Ministries, when we decided to do Bible study, we decided that we are going to start at Genesis. Because Genesis, it says in the beginning. If you don't understand the beginning, don't get to Revelation. Don't go to Matthew. You got to go and understand the beginning. So Christ says, I want you to have a full understanding of what this power is about. And for you to understand it, you need to go back to the laws of Moses. You got to go back to what the prophets wrote about me. You got to go back and hear what the psalmist says, David, when he spoke about me. You have got to understand what Joel meant when he says in Joel 2, that in the last days I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. You have got to get back to the fundamentals and understand God's word and what the promised covenant is. And so God, Jesus Christ, spoke. And he unlocked their understanding. And now let Christ speak now as you go ahead and read for me 46 going down. What did Christ speak about the past, present, and the future? Go ahead, evangelist. And said unto them, thus it is written, mm -hmm. and thus it is it behooved Christ yes. to suffer and to rise from the dead mm -hmm. the third day. Mm -hmm. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Okay, hold on there. So that power and the promise of the Father, all that thing should be preached in whose name? His name. And who is that his that you're talking about? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ name. So there is something that we need to understand because a lot of us get caught up with the power and the manifestation because we really, 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 really want to just, um, you know, I am powerful and I am this and I am that. And when you see every eyes start coming in, you know that that is a red flag. <laughs> when you hear too much eyes coming into a conversation, it's a red flag because the power belongs to God. The power is given to us by the giver of the gifts for the, for the, for the building up of the saints. It is not a power given for us to walk and feel in triumph. It is a power that is given for the building up of the saints. It has nothing to do with you. It has to do all to do with the people of God. And that is why when we talk, people, I like to use the term minister for everyone that operates in the spirit. Because if there's something about minister that keeps us humble, because we understand that we are servants of the most high God. And no matter what office you operate in, we are first called servants because we are called to operate as one who pours into the people of God. And so when we think of ourselves from that standpoint, it becomes easy. It keeps our pride in check <laughs> because now we don't go out there operating. And, and that is what happened in some of these religious institutions where we see people bowing down before people because after a while we miss the vision of from where the power comes because we start glorifying the man. And I want to put things in proper perspective here because Christ went back to the beginning. He come into the present and then he spoke to the future and then he gave some commands and he said, Jerusalem is key. We're going to talk a little bit about your Jerusalem today because there's something that is specific about Jerusalem that is, that is tied to the blessing that you are supposed to receive. And Jerusalem is the place is that place where Christ had operated. Christ has brought you. You had walked with Christ for the processing. 
You have evidence and witness these things that Christ spoke of that were executed. So Christ speak of some things that came to pass and they came to pass in Jerusalem. Now, go ahead and finish it, Evangelist, because I want to highlight these things and we have to jump over to the book of Acts. So go ahead and finish it. Read it down to, to, to verse 49 and, and, and let us just stop, wrap this up here. And ye are witnesses of these things. Mm -hmm. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. Yes. But carry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Beautiful. So you're supposed to tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you're endued with power from an eye. There is something that is indicative about this whole thing. And I want you to read verse 50 down to verse 53, and it's going to tell you how they waited. It's very important. It's very important for us to understand the how. <laughs> because a lot of times we hear go and wait. And a lot of us are just sitting down and we're waiting and we're complaining and we're murmuring and we're saying, but God, I need this thing and I'm not getting it. Lord, I need this thing and I'm not. And we are waiting and we are murmuring. I like to go back to the, to the patriot that we just studied in Bible study. And I, I would that all of you would be a part of Bible study because there is a walking, there is a process that takes place that some people, you wonder why we name this, this, this whole service prayer and the word. It would weed out those who want to get to the power without going through the prayer and the word because they are not interested. It's easy. Sometimes Christ have a way and a strategy when he wants to get rid of the fish and bread disciples. He tell them some hard truth. He said, listen, until you can eat of my body and drink of my blood, you cannot take this cup. You cannot handle this business that I'm about. And I want some people to understand that if you cannot tarry in prayer, if you cannot stay with the word, I don't want to hear about your power. Because God has a principle in which he issues power. He operates within principle. He operates within offices. He operates within certain, 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 certain uh, uh, instructions that he gives. And it's very, very vital when it comes to the move of God's power. And so tell me, evangelist, how did they wait? Take me from 50 down to 53. And he led them out as far as Bethany, mm -hmm. and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them mm -hmm. and carried up into heaven. Mm -hmm. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy mm -hmm. and were continually in the temple praising <laughs> so here is the key this is their, their this is their posture they they worshiped him says verse 52 and returned to jerusalem with great joy and continually in the temple praising and blessing god so their position was one of worship worship <laughs> For you to wait on the process, you have to take a posture of worship. You got to get flat before God. Because sometimes a lot of us don't understand that the way up is down on your knees. Some of us want to go up, but we want to go up like Superman with our hands all up and our chest puffed out. And we don't understand that the way up is down. It's down on my knees. Grace, you say, I found the answer down on my knees. <laughs> you have got to understand that when you really want to be lifted up, God says those who, those who, 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 who humble themselves shall be lifted up and those who exalt themselves shall be abased. So there is a posture that is required and this posture tells us that they continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Blessing God, a posture of thanksgiving, a posture that 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 that, that, that uh, Joseph knew so well, <laughs> because Joseph had to understand that you have got to convert that 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 pain to praise to receive the power. Don't make that miss you. Convert that pain to praise to receive the power. Convert that pain to praise to receive the power. Yes, he had gone through the hurt. Yes, he had been prosecuted. Yes, he had been thrown in a pit. Yes, he had gone through some hard things that he would have said to yourself that man, man, my God.
God, how can he come back and have and show love to these people who are so wicked to him? It seems as though it's a series of unfortunate events, like a, like a series and a movie. And, and you say to yourself, can one man endure so much? But he says, listen, I must turn this pain and this process into praise. I got to turn it into a praise meeting because they went and they continued to tarry in the city of Jerusalem until and until the power came, but they didn't just tarry. The tarrying, in quote, tarrying means that you wait in praise and worship and an adoration and an expectation. And that's when the outpouring will come. Another thing with the posture. Think about it. They could have said, uh, so God could have said to them, you know what? You're going to get the power in Jerusalem. Jesus Christ didn't specify more than listen, go and wait. Some of them could have decided, we're going to go back home. Are we going to go about our business as usual? We are still in Jerusalem and here we work in Jerusalem. So let's go do this as usual. That is not what is required for the power God was saying to them. You need to set apart some time differently from what you would do in your day to day. When you want a, when you want a specific blessing, you have to do a specific thing sometimes. That's why some of us shy away from fasting and prayer. We ask some person sometimes and you say you operate it. I don't understand how you can operate in a gift and say that you are you are you are ministering to people and you have all that power and you have never taken a day of fasting. You have never had a day of prayer. You have never sat down with the scriptures and just see God's face. You have never just come among God people and just relax in a place of posture of worship and just spend time in the presence of God because there is a process of worship and patience and waiting that has to take place before we get there. Let us run over to the book of Acts now with me, evangelist. We're going to look at what happens after the process of prayer and praise and all of these things. So there were some spiritual hymns. There was some worshiping going on. There were some things going on there that really had a, a, a big part in this whole process. And there was an assembly. I was saying to you that they did not choose to just go back to business as usual. They did not choose to just, uh, let's go back to our family. And then, you know, when the power come, then we are all scattered in different places. You know what they did? The whole, whole 120 of them that were followers of Christ, that were in the midst of him at, the, at his ascension, when he spoke, these followers, what they did is that they went and they waited and they congregated and they spent time together in prayer and worship. Waiting in expectation. That's a thing that we don't do well in this era because there is so much distraction. You got to turn off the TV, shut off the phone, turn off everything and go and build an altar in your home and wait in expectation that God, I need something that is different. I'm going to cut off food. I'm going to cut off pleasure. I'm going to cut off these things that are so sensual that keeps me distracted because I want something that is different. I want a never before power. I want a never before experience. So I got to do a never before thing to receive that from God. So I want to cut off. So it's not a matter of that you are working for the gift, you know, it's that you are preparing yourself to receive it <laughs> because it is already promised. But for you to contain that which is coming, you have got to open and make space in yourself. You got to make room in this vessel to receive that. Because when the Holy, Paul, when the Holy Spirit comes, he needs, he needs a vessel that is ready to receive him. And that is what this whole process was about. So go ahead and read for me now as we're going to take it home. We're going to read about the power because we want to learn a little bit more. We understand what took place before, that it was spoken of the prophets by the prophets about what should have happened. And then we understand what happens in the time of Christ that he walked out this, these, these scriptures. And then we say now, okay, he walked out what was just spoken. And the, and the apostles were the, the, the apostles and the, and, and the followers were there and they saw and learned his teaching so that now they were prepared for the next step. So there's that learning and teaching and a learning and watching and, 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 and studying closely the life of Christ because what you're going to have to do is do what he does because you're a follower, you're a disciple. And as a disciple, you have to know what he did. You have to understand how we handle the situation. So when it comes to you, you know how to, how to, how to have that depth Portment against in the spiritual realm to, to, to battle those principalities, those powers, those rulers, those, those dimensions and those levels of spiritual authority that you are going to come up against. You have got to go through that training to understand the word, to understand how to, how, how to operate in the spiritual, that when the power comes, you have the, the, the knowledge. You know why Christ could have in, in the book of Luke unlocked understanding? You know why? Because they already had the knowledge. <laughs> 
So sometimes, what is, what is understanding? Understanding is comprehension of the information that you have. They had all the information, but they lacked the ability to really put it all together and, and just unlock the discernment and the comprehension to be able to put the information together and, and say, this is what it means. And now we can apply wisdom to it by operating within that, 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 uh, that, that knowledge and that understanding. Wisdom is the action that comes out of knowledge and understanding. So now they were given that unlocking that made that, made that understanding come forth that the understanding now can be transferred at the, when the power comes into action, but they should not get to the wisdom, which is the action, which is understanding in action. Wisdom is understanding being acted out. Wisdom, wisdom is Christ, what Christ spoke to you. Now you are now acting on it. And now that is what is wisdom because now you are able to live it. But they, God said, Christ said to them, don't live it until you are given that power. Now that you understand it, wait and seek and stay in that position and that posture of praise and worship. Now talk to me about what happened in, in Acts 1. We're going to read from Acts 1 from verse, verse 1 through to about 8. Go ahead. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Mm -hmm. Until the day in which he was taken up. Mm -hmm. After that, he threw the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, said he, ye have heard of me. Mm -hmm. For John truly baptized with water, mm -hmm. but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father had put in his own power, Mm -hmm. But ye shall receive power. Mm -hmm. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, mm -hmm. and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the before and the after. So we see the disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane. And in the Garden of Gethsemane, when the Roman soldiers came to capture Christ, <laughs> it almost seemed like, uh, let us go a little bit before that. When Christ was staying up to pray, they could not tarry with him <laughs> and they fell asleep. They loved him. We see one betraying. We see one denying. We see all kind of things taking place in the midst of this spiritual battle that was taking place. Why? They had the information, but they did not receive the power. <laughs> I want you to follow me closely. And in the midst of one of the most intense spiritual warfare that was taking place, they fell asleep. <laughs> one draw his sword and chop somebody's ears off. One denied him. <laughs> one betrayed him. <laughs> you understand? In the midst of it, one ran out of his clothes. <laughs> you understand? There was so much that took place just because of the fact that they did not receive these powers yet. <laughs> Stay with me. I'm going somewhere. So God... Jesus Christ understanding that, listen, I am here with you. And in the midst of Christ even being there, all of these things were happening. All of these situations that would almost spell like, oh, they are in a defeated position because they don't seem to have that, that thing, that mm, to make them want to stand up and, and fight and, and have the boldness and the tenacity to, 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 to stand in the face of adversity. They ran away. So there comes something now that happens in Acts 8, in Acts 1 and verse 8. It says, uh, he provides power. He says, you shall receive power. But notice that the power that is coming uh, is, is the power that was promised is not a force or a political authority. So it's not something that is to establish 
a kingdom on earth that is going to be like that of where, oh, we are going to be back in power and we are going to be ruling with some form of political authority. But it was a spiritual authority. In other words, Israel understood what, a lot of times when you talk about power and authority in Israel, because you have to understand this, when we talk about scriptural things, we have got to understand the hermeneutic, hermeneutics and all of those things that speak with the time and the dispensation and what was going on in the community in the culture, in the society at that time. When you speak of authority and power, the first thing that would come to people's mind is thinking of Caesar, is thinking of the days, the glory days of Israel, when they had the, uh, the great kings like King David, King Saul, and King Solomon, where they had this power and authority. That is one of the reasons and one of the single most reasons why they did not receive Christ, because they were looking back to be established as a, as, as a kingdom authority in the earth realm and did not understand that the king that would rule, that was spoken of by the prophets, that was prophesied by, 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 by Israel, that was prophesied by, by, by God in the Garden of Eden to, to Adam and Eve, this king that would come, that would deliver, was not supposed to be an earthly kingdom. They did not understand that revelation, because what we say already, that for certain things to be unlawful in the in the wisdom realm it, to unlock that knowledge to give you that understanding it has to be done by whom the holy spirit and these people who were operating did not have that holy spirit unlocking these things because they blinded their eyes because of their own jealousy okay we understand that and we have spoken of that so let's move on to something more what we are talking about now is that here they are and now the power has come what is it that we can expect differently to happen the power brings some things to these young to, to these men. Jesus was indicating a revival of Jewish dominance. Uh, he was not uh, indicating a, 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 a revival of Jewish dominance. Instead, it was the power meaning that they would have ability and capacity. It is not about political power, but ability and capacity. Let those two things just let it ring on in your spirit ability and capacity. That is what he was speaking to when he says you will be endowed with power. You will be given some ability and you'll have some capacity to do some things, to receive some things inside of you. That's, that's why we spoke about what? You are supposed to make what? Room. That is what the preparation, that is what them coming together and, and, and doing all the sanctification and the, and the worshiping of God to prepare for the power. So you've got to make the house right. Prepare your house to receive. Jesus promised that once the Holy Spirit came upon them, his followers would have these new abilities to do things. So, what does the book of Acts speak about? Why do they call it the book of Acts? Because it is the extraordinary, it is the it is the acts of ordinary people that were extraordinary acts of ordinary people when they were empowered, when they were endued with power, the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what the power of the Holy Spirit does. It makes ordinary people like you and I have the power to do extraordinary things because of the capacity, because of the room, because of the power that has been created, that thing that God has given to us, that, that ability and the capacity to do these things. Now, let's talk a little bit about, um, to, there's a, a way out of the scripture, verse 8. I wanted to read it again. And there's something I wanted to underline under the evangelist. Just go ahead and read verse 8 of, of Acts, Acts 1 again. But ye shall receive power. Mm -hmm. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Yes. And ye shall be witnesses. Ye shall, hold on, just stop there. Ye shall, you see that word be? I want you to understand be. Or underline be. You shall be witnesses. Notice what the scripture says. You shall be, not do. There's a, there's a vast difference between being a witness <laughs> than doing witnessing. <laughs> when you're doing a thing, you are dis you are disassociated from, you're just doing an action. But he says that this is not about the doing that I'm calling you to. I'm calling you to be. <laughs> because what I'm asking the world to do is to look at your lifestyle. So a lot of times we are talking about you are, you're doing. I can do this. I can pray and I can chase this and I can do. These are the doing. But he says, I want you to be. <laughs> So they were to be, this power was for you to be. Turn to, you, you want to say to somebody, the power is for you to be, not to do. <laughs> the power is for you to be. It's for you to be a witness, to, for your lifestyle to be one that, re, that, that, that represents the kingdom of God. And through you, people can see the power that they want to be drawn to the kingdom of God. 
So they will, they, they will be a witness. That's one thing that we want to point out there. And the next thing is that the power came from, it, it came from without, not from within. <laughs> so there was evidence that the power came from on high and fell on them. <laughs> So there is something that is going, it is a power that's deposited, not one that is that, that is enacted from inside out. <laughs> so I don't need you to tell me that you have the power. Show me because the power is supposed to come down from God and be manifested and be evident. So that's where God wanted to take his people. Number two, three is that God says that the believers were to be witnesses of Christ, not of themselves. So there is some things that we want to talk about, and I'm going to close this out now is that when the power comes, the power that is given to you, remember the process that takes place. One, there is the learning. Two, there is the putting together of the things that were spoken because notice everything about the attributes of the power aligns to the fact of the giver of the power. The power of the Holy Spirit is for one thing and one thing only. And I will say this and I want to make you hear it loud and clear. The power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit is for one thing and for one thing only. It is to make Christ known to this world. It is to expose Jesus Christ to this world. And so what God is doing, God, what all God did, Christ did it with his disciples. He carried them through three years of walk with me, do what I do, university. That was the learning. Then he get, went back and he says to them at the end of their class in their graduation, he says to them, I have walked out everything that was written about me. And so when you see my life, my life is a, is a, is a reflection, is a, is a walk out of that which is spoken of me. There are some things that are spoken of you in the Bible and you are now called to be as a Christ follower, to walk out those things. What has been spoken about me, God says that I have called you I have called you and I send you forth. He says in the Great Commission that you should be a witness in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and into the four corners of the world. You should preach this gospel. You should baptize men and make disciples of all men and teach the, 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 the good news of Jesus Christ. That is what is spoken of you. That is what is our, our mandate for ministry and everything with the power. We are going to get into the teaching of the ministerial gifts and we're going to talk about the ministerial offices and we are going to talk about the fruit and we are going to talk about how each of these gifts complement each other when we do in our, in our Bible study. I wanted to, to, to really log on to this thing and sign up because we are going to get deep and granular more into the gifts. All I am giving you now is to make you understand that the power is principal and is necessary for the effective use of the gift and to fortify you against the things that that comes up against you when you turn when you're going to battle and when you're going to warfare i like the discussions that were that were spoken earlier because they speak about i, I, I like when i heard sister 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 linda sister sister brianna everybody everybody uh, uh, uh minister kia everybody went to a place of speaking about the necessity of having the kingdom of god behind you that power because if you're going to warfare without authority <laughs> we talk about the sons of Skiba. We understand that there are consequences that you can face. When I hear people talking about backlash, I understand backlash can only happen to those who don't have authority. Because when Christ sends you, no, no demon can come back. <laughs> they go from whence they come because God has given you power. And that power is what gives you the authority to speak a thing and it shall be. That's what the word of God tells you. It tells you that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. It don't tell you that what is in the world can come and damage what is inside of you. You have the power. And when you step, demons walk. And you have got to identify and acknowledge the power that is within you. It's dunamis. It's power that doesn't, em it doesn't emit from inside of you and goes out. It comes from an eye. It's dunamis power. It's power that is sent down from God. And no man can challenge the authority of God. That is why in the Old Testament we hear it being said that who God bless, no man can curse. And I need you to speak and understand the authority and the power that flows within you is not one that can be trifled with by any principalities, powers, or demons. That's why Paul says that, listen, we have been given this power. <laughs> And this power, it, it, it stands above principalities, powers, rulers, and spiritual. We wrestle against them. <laughs> because now we have power to fight. 
You understand? The thing is that the wrestle that we fight is one that we will win because Christ has said that it is finished. All that we need is, has been done and at the finished work of the cross. And once you come under the power of the almighty God, you will understand that we cannot lose. <laughs> And let me tell you this, sometimes you understand, you might look at your situation and say, but Lord, I am sick, I may have lost. I am, I am in prison, I may have lost. I am this, I may have lost. I, I, you know, my, 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 my friend died, my, my sister died, my brother died, I may have lost. That's not how losing works in the spiritual realm. My brothers and sisters, all the apostles were, were, were probably martyrs. They, they went to a state. They probably were crucified upside down. Did they lose? No. Paul at the end says, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. I have finished my course. And hence it's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. You understand? There is a crown of righteousness. It's not about the adversities that you face. We need to move away from this, this, um, this, this materialistic Christianity that speaks about just blessing being a manifestation of wealth. Yes, you can receive wealth from the blessings of God as Abraham and the patriarchs did, but that is not all that is contained. And so when we come under adversities like Job, we start saying, oh, we are cursed. No, it is not so. We go through because, because we understand that the trial of our faith work at patience and patience must have its perfect work in us, says the word of God, says Paul. So we understand that, that you can be in prison like Peter and prison walls break open because there is power. <laughs> You have the power, you have the authority, but we are operating because we, we, we are attached to a kingdom. And so we don't just use the power for our benefit. We use it according to God's release. When God says, go ahead, Sister Brianna and speak. I see your hand up and we're closing out now. We're going to hand over to Evangelist when we come back. Go ahead. Um, okay, well, we've been speaking about everything from a perspective of only getting authority from God, which is the right way to do it. But mm -hmm. there's a lot of people who, when they're, when you see people that are not doing the process and they're still doing things and miracles and stuff like that. And yes. sometimes you get authority from things that are not God and they oh, will, but it's at a price and it's yes. because those men that went to go cast out the devil or whatever, Maybe they've done it before, and that's why they thought they could do it again. Yes. But what authority were they going by? Mm -hmm. It's not that they weren't going by the authority of God, but they were going by a different authority that was casting out these things. But it wasn't really mm -hmm. necessarily doing what they were thinking it was doing. Maybe the it showed up in a different uh, capacity. Mm -hmm. Maybe someone is looking like they are healed, but something else is coming about. It's just... It's very uh, tricky when you're trying to deal with these spiritual things. You have to make sure that what you are doing is founded in the Holy Spirit and is founded in the word of God. Yes. Because there's a lot of other covenants be making that could be getting results, but are not mm -hmm. going to the right um, channel. Perfect. Wonderfully said, uh, um, <laughs> um, Brianna. And I I'm going to ask Evangelist just to go to your point. I'm going to read one thing in, in the scripture in Acts, and we're going to see how that is manifested and how it was dealt with. Go over to Acts 13 for me, Evangelist, and read from verse 4. And uh, we're going to go down to about verse 9. Let's hear what happens there. Evan Acts 13, uh, 13 4 to 9. 4 to, to, yes. Mm -hmm. So they, being sent forth, by the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. departed unto Seleucia, mm -hmm. and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. Mm -hmm. Cyprus. Mm -hmm. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogue of the Jews, and they had also John to their minister. Mm -hmm. And when they had gone through the Isle of Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, mm -hmm. a false prophet, mm -hmm. a Jew, whose name was bar jesus mm -hmm. which was with the deputy of the country sergius paulus mm -hmm. a prudent man who mm -hmm. called for barnabas and saul and desired to hear the word of god mm -hmm. but elamus the sorcerer for so is his name by interpretation withstood them seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith then saul who also is called paul filled with the holy ghost set his eyes on him and said, Oh, full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? Mm 
And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Yeah, and at 12. Mm -hmm. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Right. And so you see that there are, to, to the point that we were speaking of, there's always these sorcery things that are taking place, even around the people of God. And we, we read about Simon the sorcerer. A lot of times, if you follow and chase power, you can be deceived by sorcerers. <laughs> to, Brianna, to Sister Brianna's point, it is very important for us to use to, to watch the fruit. It is the fruit that by the fruits you shall know them. <laughs> That's how we discern. And so these people, they, they, are, they are meddling around people who are, who are believers of Christ and they are coming with all kinds of signs and wonders and they oppose. But just to the point that I just spoke, when I spoke about the, the power that is in the people of God, this dunamis power that comes from an eye, when that is on the inside, did it look like Paul was afraid of this man that he could hex him and that something would come back and hurt him? And he, he spoke with the authority of the Holy Spirit. And he rebuked the man and then he prophesied to him and tell him that this is what is going to happen to you now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then I, immediately the power of God responded to it. So it is very, very important, very, very important for us to understand that we do not dread anything. We have the ultimate power that is on the inside. And at the same time, there are two kingdoms that are at work that that can show signs and wonders. I often say, Moses threw down through his rod, it turned to serpent. The, the, the Egyptians threw down their rods in sorcery and it turned to serpent. If you are following signs and wonders, if you are following certain things and don't follow the fruit, you will get caught and deceived. Go ahead, Brother Michael. I see you had your hand up. You're taking questions right now and, and interactions. I was just going to add a part into it that I remember there was a, there was a, um, a part in the Bible where um, the disciples cast out demons before and they went to this one particular demon that they were trying to cast out and they was wondering why didn't it happen and Jesus was pretty much telling them that um, these things come through prayer and fasting mm -hmm. um, which they weren't fully equipped with mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted to add that part in there yes and so you're right and so there is a process and so this goes back to what we speak about today the waiting when Christ say, go and prepare yourself, there is a preparation, there's a process that you need to go to be, go through before you can go to battle the levels. And so you are right, Michael. Yes, if we don't receive, and remember at this time, the disciples didn't have what? They didn't have the Holy Spirit because they were working with Christ. Christ gave them authority and send them and bless them and send them. So they had that authority to do it. But here is it now for the preparation process for this, when he was about to graduate them to the level of bringing them in where the indwelling of the Holy Spirit is something that is new. It happened for the first time in the church in Acts when there was an indwelling of the Holy Spirit, where the Spirit didn't come and just rest upon you or somebody bless you. And like in the Old Testament, we hear about the Spirit of Moses, the Spirit that was upon Moses, that anointing that was upon Moses was taken and put on, on other prophets that they could, other men, so that they could share the, the load of Moses' work. What we see happening here is that that's not just a, 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 a Spirit of God come upon you like it did with Samson and, and the patriots. What it is, is a, in dwelling, the spirit of God came and dwell on the inside of these people in the, in, in the, under the day of Pentecost. And so now they had a new power. They were endowed with power that they could speak with the authority of the, of the living God that was on the inside of them. You understand? And so that is what changes the difference. Yes, some of those spirits will only come out by prayer and fasting. So for us to really be there, that's the reason why we do these things in our ministry. We say, let's get into fasting and prayer before we even move into the ministry of a year. Because we say we're going to do 21 or 40 days fasting, whatever you can do, whatever you can manage. But we have to prepare our vessel. This is the process of preparation so that the power, we can be endowed with that power that we can stand in the face of adversity when we are challenged by demons and principalities and forces. We can speak, thus say the Lord, and the spirit of God can go forth from us because he's on the inside. He's on the inside. 
Okay, beautiful, wonderful. Um, and, and I see Evangelist put a scripture out there that, that really complements that. Um, we can drop it also on Facebook if we, if we want so that those over there can get those interactions. Um, it is a wonderful thing and we are continuing this in our Bible studies and I'm gonna ask you guys, go ahead and share this out. For those persons who are out there who are believers, I need, God wants his people to know that we have a weapon. We have the power of the Holy Spirit, but if we do not walk in that authority, we can lose battles and God wants us to win. He has called us to win. And so I am going to, we're going to hand over to Evangelist Kirk and he's going to do the altar call because close out and do, you know, the, the call uh, for those who want to give their lives to Christ because we always want to give that opportunity. We always want to give that opportunity where persons are in a position where you say, you know what, I understand where I'm at and I need, I need this power. I need to receive from God and I want to start that process in my life where I, I'm willing to go into the fasting. I'm willing to go into, into seeking God's face, to be in that upper room position where I'm worshiping and spending time shutting off some of the things that are distraction in my life that I can give to God truly my whole self because God wants to fill our heart with his truth and his love. All right, go ahead, Brother Kirk. I want to ask you to come on your camera right now and just um, bring us out, just close us out in that in that call uh call uh for salvation to those who are out there go ahead my evangelist for, for those who are hurting at this moment as as it um it just came to my mind that there's a lot of people who are hurting right now and especially the whole pandemic and everything that's happening around us and a lot of people there are there are a lot of things that they have tried a lot of you tried like, like a whole bunch of things, but yet still you still have that hurt inside. It, 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 it's, it's still there, that empty space is still there. And you have the social media, you have a whole bunch of friends, but at the same time, when you are in your own space, you are alone and you're still lonely. There is this small voice that is speaking to you. What is lacking is Christ himself. And there's no wound that can be healed properly, internally, spiritually, without Christ in your life. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man should give up his life for his friend. This is the love that God has, has, has put down for us. We have to believe this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He has made a whole lot of preparation for us. My friends, if you are not in line with Christ today, make a start today. Make a start. Come to the foundation. The foundation is just saying to the Lord that, Father, I am sorry for what I have done over the years. Please forgive me. Please give me a heart of worship. Please give me a heart of comfort. Please. Accept my words, dear Lord. It's as simple as that. You can make a start. That's the foundation. The foundation is just to make a start. It's just to say, Lord, I am sorry for what I have done. And I want to serve you. If you believe that Christ is the Christ, is the Lord. He said, call on me. Believe in me. Believe in the name of the Lord. Believe on my name. And if you believe and the name of Jesus. If you believe that Jesus is Christ and he died, he bore it on the cross for us, you will be comforted. So my friends today, I am just asking you right now, just make that little start. Everything is happening around you and things are not getting better. People are out there, they're, they're sad, they're lonely and they keep doing the loop. It's like a loop. They keep going in a loop. They're doing the same thing over and over. For once, give Christ a try. Give Christ a try in your life and let's see. He's there for us. He's waiting with open arms. That's my few words today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And um, Evangelist, I just want you to um, do that prayer just um, in case anyone is out there who wants to receive Christ as their Lord and Savior. Just lead, just lead in that prayer as to how we can say this prayer and just be saved. Go ahead. 
Amen, amen. Praise God. Thank you so much, Arm Evangelist Kirk, for those words. Mm -hmm. And if you want to give your life to our Lord and Savior, you say this prayer after me right now. Mm -hmm. Say, Dear Lord, I know that I am a sinner. Uh I repent of my sins and I surrender my life to you right now. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. I want to make that start. I want to have that foundation that Evangelist Kirk spoke about. Mm -hmm. And I want my foundation and my start to be this day, this, this moment. Mm -hmm. If you are a backslider, say, Lord, I'm coming back home to you. I repent. I know I've messed up, but I'm starting over today. I give my life to you. I surrender my life to you. Deliver me from evil. Baptize me and fill me with your power as I seek you. The power that we spoke about on this message today. And be glorified in my life. In the name of Yeshua, Mashiach, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. If you have said that those words, and if you believe in your heart, that's what the word of God says. It's not that complicated, guys. Sometimes we believe that the process of, um, of, of salvation is so easy that sometimes we want to overcomplicate it. The word of God says, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. And if you say the prayer of faith today and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are saved. And I say to you, you can find a Bible-believing church and be a part of that, or you can join us here every weekday. We are here every week, and we are here on, on, on Saturdays at 9, 9.30 a.m. And we have this ministry that you can connect with us virtually. If you are in the Tampa Bay area, you can we, we you, know, you can fellowship with us when we are back in the building. We just want you to know that. Just keep that connection because if you notice with the persons who continued in the upper room, they, they, they came together. They could have separated themselves, but they came together. The Lord said that the word of God said we should not forsake the assembly. It's very important for us to come together understanding iron sharpens iron and and each of us have a ministry that's inside of us and that ministry is to empower someone else in the body that is the purpose of it and that's why we have been given this power i just want to pray and close us out father we thank you for all that has been said and done today i pray that you may let your peace your joy the fruit of the spirit lord god the fruit of the spirit which carries these nine characteristics let it now rest in the heart of your people let this word, Lord God, be, be a seed that will take germinate in the hearts of your people on fertile soil. And that when they hear it, Lord God, they will never depart from this truth, but will embrace and know that you have given unto them power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. And that they will come to know, Lord God, not to wonder and to think and to, and to ponder, but to know that you are with us and you have given unto us everything. Your divine power has given unto us everything that we need for life. So now we come into those things. We celebrate those things. We live into those things. And we say now, Holy Spirit, walk with us, be with us as we go forth. Even as we live our lives through the course of this week, Lord God, you walk with us and be with us and empower us to stand against the wiles of the devil. As we keep our hearts and minds stayed on you, you keep us in perfect peace, Yahweh. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we call it done in the name of Yeshua Mashiach. Amen. God bless your hearts. Thank you so much for being a part of our worship session today. We pray you were blessed and keep the connection. If you are not, if you have not done so as yet, go ahead and subscribe to our to our channels that we have, whatever medium you're watching it on right now. If it's YouTube, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button and be a part of these services. One thing we promise you that we will always bring the undiluted word of God. We will always bring to you the truth of God's word. That is our commitment to you as a body. This is a team of persons who have been gifted for such a time as this. And I speak because I know intimately the heart of the persons who God has surrounded us with. And we are, we are saying, God, we say yes to the call and we are available to you. So go ahead and sign up, subscribe. If you need more information to come in on these, um, these Zoom meetings, you can just reach out to us, send us a message on Facebook, subscribe to us on Facebook, subscribe to us on Instagram, subscribe to us on YouTube. And be a part of this, this, this social meeting that we're having where we can come together 
and give glory to God. I love you. Jesus Christ loves you. Keep him in your heart. And he promised that if you keep your eyes on him, he'll keep you in perfect peace. God bless. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom.